Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to look at a company that I've never mentioned on the channel and um, I actually started doing it because I'm on a little special project that I might tell you guys about in the future but anyways I'll be looking at a lot of different companies and give you my opinions on them and Rocket Lab was the first one that I started with and I was really really surprised. This might be a super good growth company for the future that you can hold for 10, 20, 30 years. And if the thesis, it's one of those companies that you're either going to make a lot of money or lose a lot of money, but not really a lot of in between. So I want to give you a little bit of rundown on uh, what I think about Rocket Lab and what I came up with in my research. And it's very late in the evening here, so I appreciate you being here. And I might or might not be wearing pants, but you will never know. So anyways, if you're new here, please make sure you subscribe and let's get to the video. So Rocket Lab. The funny thing is I came across this company many, many years ago and I saw a video about them. They were not at, on the, listed on the stock market at that time and SpaceX was doing fantastic and I was thinking, what a cute try at Rocketry, but they are just going to run out of money and, and fail. I mean, I know how hard it was for Elon to get SpaceX off the ground, pun intended. You see what I did there? Uh, so I was like, there's no way that this guy makes it. Uh, but when I was looking, so I, I didn't have any further interest in the company, even when I heard that they, you know, went SPAC and they're on the stock market, I was like, ah, this is one of those money grabs from people. And, uh, it kind of was actually because <laughs> they opened at $10 and then it fell a lot. Uh, but I was really, really positively surprised. And I must say, I'm really impressed by Peter Beck, the CEO of this company. So let's dive into what I found. So their uh, mission is that they, this is, I, I'm, I'm quoting. So we open access to space to improve life on earth. And the thing is that through acquisitions and a lot of other things, they are not just a rocket launch company, actually only one third of their income comes from rocket launch and two thirds of their income actually comes from space services where they are looking for, uh, you know, they build spacecraft uh, both to low Earth orbit, uh, to the moon uh, and interplanetary and they want to help other companies also handle the spacecraft in, in space and, you know, handle their data, which is a very high uh, margin activity. And obviously, obviously, if the space industry expands a lot, then this service for Rocket Lab is going to expand a lot and it's going to be very, very profitable. And believe it or not, this company has some few competitive edges. For example, they were the pioneers of uh, the small launch vehicle. I mean, it's kind of ironic because SpaceX was the original pioneer with their Falcon 1. But they never finished that development actually. So they just had a successful test flight and they went straight to the Falcon 9. And this is when Peter Beck actually founded the company because they were like, look, there's all these uh, companies that are ready for a small rocket. Uh, and SpaceX just abandoned that concept. And, you know, SpaceX doesn't really want to have a rocket company. What they want is they want to colonize Mars and get people there. And you can't get there with small rockets. So I understand why they did what they did. And I also understand why Rocket Lab did what they did. But so this is a competitive edge for them that they have a very flight proven. Uh, I think it's like they delivered 156 uh, things into orbit. Uh, so very, very proven and tested. Then number two is they have a very deep vertical integration. They 3D print and manufacture all their rockets with their own technology. Very, very fancy and nice. And they have a lot access to a lot of launch facilities. And one very interesting is that they have a private launch facility in New Zealand. And the reason why it's quite significant is because they don't need to wait for anyone. They don't need to schedule with anyone. It's, you know, there just for them. So they have a lot of flexibility on um, how they shoot up things with their own uh, customers. And this company, I read through their 10K, the latest 10Q, and they have 341 million in cash. And you know, this is always something you worry about when it's rocket companies, because you know, space is insanely uh, capital intense. And by the way, this is another very positive surprise with Peter Beck is they seem to be very frugal, 
he gets a lot of results, he keeps his promises, and he's, he seems to be very, very good with money. So I really could, I'm, I'm really positively surprised at this guy. So 341 million in cash and cash equivalents, 100 million in, in long-term debt on the balance sheet so they could pay off their debt uh, like this. So that's very good. And they're currently burning about $22 million uh, per quarter. Uh, so at the current burn rate, they have 15 uh, quarters of runway. But keep in mind that they're developing uh, their next rocket and they have a lot of R&D. So this burn rate, I guess, is going to be very like, you know, sometimes high, sometimes low. So you can't really count like this. And I think it's best as as... Uh, an investor that you think with that they're going to need to dilute and raise equity uh, or uh, take a loan, it's better to raise equity. But I think it's at this stage, it's almost better that you think that that is going to happen. So their Q3 forecasts were quite promising, but uh, they don't show any signs of profitability. Management doesn't talk about profitability and it's not even on the map of even analysts that I checked on um, that, that I could find. Nobody talks about when this company is going to be profitable. And that is a problem uh, because it makes it insanely hard to value this company. And also this is where the big risk comes from. So I gave it a try uh, how to evaluate this company. But again, it's very hard because you don't have a comparable other rocket company that has succeeded where you can go and, and see like, okay, uh, they have a 10% margin. Uh, you know, this is how much capital they needed. So there's just no comparisons. This is number one. Number two is the space industry is so nascent. Um, and I actually watched an interview with Peter Beck uh, with Ashley Venice. I think it was on Bloomberg. I might be wrong. It doesn't matter. And uh, even the founder and CEO of Rocket Lab was saying that he is his goal is to create a sustainable space company and he doesn't yet know what that uh, entails he just knows that you know space is a fantastic very exciting space and currently it's undergoing rapid um, you know expansion and rapid innovation and he's sure that as that industry is grows they're going to find a very sustainable business model that will be very profitable so that was a very nice way of saying he doesn't yet know how his company is going to be profitable so but i i actually do believe based on his past track record that they're going to get it and just to give you an example spacex is a launch company right and then because of their reusability they came up with the Starlink idea, which was a very easy idea to, uh, you know, realize for, for them. They didn't need to raise extra money, you know, they could just do it. And it increased the valuation of SpaceX in the, uh, by around $100 billion. And it was just in the, mi in, in, in the matter of a few years. So Rocket Lab could also come up with uh, a new operating system that helps manage satellites or, you know, track the stars, or uh, they're actually doing a test with um, uh, producing drugs in, in zero gravity with a, a drug manufacturer and, you know, like that can hit really big. Uh, so I can almost guarantee you that the rocket lab of five years from now is going to be very, very different from the rocket lab of today. And therefore it's insanely hard to model this, uh, company. So technically I think, uh, I wanted to show you a picture that I don't have now. Let me. Here is the picture where you can see, oh my God, I'm sorry. So here we go. So technically the company, this is like they IPO would around $10 and then it went to the, you know, 2021, 2022 craziness. And then it's been in a long uh, downtrend all the way down to $4 where it has a very huge uh, support, didn't go lower, and now it seems to have broken out of this uh, channel line that it, it was in, 
at six dollars and now it seems to be in a new uptrend so the question is is this uptrend sustainable so here's my rocket lab valuation and again uh, I think this is one of the valuations that has the most uncertainties in it. So I'm just going to tell you my assumptions and what the numbers say and then do with it what you will. Uh, so their revenue in 2022 was 210 million. This year they're projected to have a 286 million in revenue. That's a 36% uh, increase. And by the way, from 2021 to 2022, their increase was like 300 and something percent. So I was like, I, I looked at some space projections and um, the analysts think that, you know, th this company can grow around 50% year over year for the next many years, which is a very hefty target. But this is what I ended up counted with. So that would put their 2028 revenue at uh, $2.1 billion. Uh, so this is like not showing the millions. And the reason why I have a comma is because I'm in Europe and I didn't manage to change so comma in Europe is the same as the point in, in the US so I said uh, that they will have a 10% net margin again this is one of those the positive net margin is not even on the map uh, so it's it's an assumption to to put there but it can be that in 2028 they will still be losing money very very easily and then uh, you can only basically grow on the price to uh, gross margin or uh, price to sales, which I also thought with here. Uh, so this would give them a net income of 200 millions. Uh, now, another thing is they currently dilute, they have a stock-based compensation of about 30% uh, of their income, and they have been diluting the shareholders about 5% per year. I'm just going to assume that that continues. So that would mean that currently they have 477 million shares, but in 2028, they will have 609 million. Uh, and I think if a company is growing at 50% year over year, has a lot of growth ahead of them, which they probably will in 2028, I think it easily warrants a 60p. I don't know what the P of SpaceX is. They are valued over $100 billion. I think it's like in the thousands if they're even profitable. So I think that the 60 is, I feel good with that number. You know, you can say it's too high. I don't know. I don't care. That's the number that I counted with. And that would give me a market cap of about 13 billion. And if you divide that back with the shares, that would give a share price of $21, which is 4x up uh, from here. Again, if the company is not profitable, you have the price to uh, gross margin or the price to sale. And the price to sale would be six with this valuation. And again, for a growing company, uh, it's not. As I would say that that's very cheap. I would say that that's very cheap. Um, so if this doesn't pan out, so the things that can, so just on this, it looks like a very, very good investment. But I would say that this is a fantastically risky investment because this company almost for certain will need extra capital. They will need to raise equity. They don't really haven't, they haven't found out their final business model yet. It's a very, very startup, startup company that went IPO with a SPAC. That was for a reason. So if it doesn't pan out, this company can go bankrupt or lose 90% of, of, of its value. So it's super risky, but it has a very, very good upside. And I'm definitely going to do further research on this company. So let me know what you think in the comments. Please make sure that you're subscribed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.